Welcome back to chapter 10. Um, we are on page 10 and we are going to do example 4 and we're going to look at cash flow hedges first. So again with the cash flow hedge we're going to record gains and losses on the hedge um, or hedging instrument. in OCI and then reclassify them when the gains and losses on the hedged item are record, recorded. So our example, on June 2nd year 2 when the spot rate was US 1 Canadian whatever, Wadsworth Inc. of Vancouver contracted to sell inventory to an American supplier for USD 500,000. Delivery was scheduled for August 1st with payment to be made in full on delivery. So, obviously in real life you'd know whether um, the earnings process was finished or not. In these examples we have to use words to kind of indicate them to you. So, contracted to, rather than um, they sold. So, that shows it's not recorded yet. The other word you're looking for is order. So contracted to sell inventory. Um, okay, and let's stop there and figure out what's happening. So <coughs> we're going to sell inventory. So we're giving, let's just draw this little thing. We're going to give inventory and we'll get US dollars. <coughs> so now upon receiving the order, um, Wadsworth immediately entered into a 60 day forward contract with its bank to sell USD 500,000 at a forward rate of X. So, that means for the Ford contract, and this is where students usually have problems. Um, not uh, problems, but it can be confusing. So if we look at the Ford contract, here's us, Wadsworth, and here's the bank. Are we getting or giving? It's going to be the opposite of what's happening here. So we made a sale, so we're going to be getting USD, so we're going to give USD and get Canadian. So we're giving USD for the Ford contract. And then it tells you the year end and at the end they receive payment and so on. Now the spot rate versus the forward rate. Use this for the forward contract and use this for the transaction the sale or the purchase. Now, in this case, we don't record it right now. So we won't need it right till the very end. You know, and they're always going to be equal on the last day. Those are two different rates. Okay, so let's start going through this. So June 2nd, and remember, we're using the net method for the forward contract. Okay, June 2nd, year two. Well, we entered into a contract. Can we record the sale? Nope, because it just said contracted or they made an order, something like that. So, contract for sale. Can't record it today. The other thing that happened, if you remember, with a forward contract, on the very first day, the receivable is equal to, so there's no entry. So signed forward contract to hedge against sale. So we make a little memo, no transaction, signed forward contract, 60 days, 
sell 500 USD at USD 1 equal 128 Canadian. Sorry, it's kind of squished there. So something like that, some kind of memo. I think Wiley Plus, you just have to say memo. So that's June 2nd. So remember, there's always three dates. The first when the Ford contract's entered in. Now there might be four, but hang on a thought. First, when the contract's entered into, year end and settlement. If year end isn't in the middle, then you don't have to worry about it to fair value or anything. Now, sometimes your might happen on one day and the signing that adds another day in, but don't worry too much about that right now. Okay, let's go to year end. So June 30th, year two, it's year end, and we need to adjust the forward contract to fair value. So, remember, listing the forward contract, the other transaction or the um, hedged item hasn't happened yet. So, what's happened to the US dollar? It's gone down. And we're adjusting the forward contract, and giving away US dollars. So, <coughs> one US dollar just got cheaper, and we need to fill a whole wheelbarrow full of them to wheel over there. So, are we happy? Yeah. So, US dollar went down. We are giving US dollars. So we're happy, so it's a gain. Does that make sense? So gains are credited, so it's gain on exchange. Now, the difference is we're not going to leave it in net income. We're doing a cash flow hedge, so we're, because we haven't been able to record our actual contract, we're going to kind of hide with little quotes around it, hide it in OCI until we can transfer it out when the sale finally occurs. So it has to go into OCI and then we're going to debit the Ford contract. Now Ford contract, so we're using these numbers over here. So 1.280 minus 1.275 times 500,000 which is the 2,500. So with this, we are delaying recognition of gain loss until the hedged item is recorded. So, just to recap, we've got an unrecognized firm commitment, so we can't record it right now. We did sign a forward contract, but using the net method, which is what you have to use um, for Wiley Plus and for we just do a memo. Comes to year end, we have to adjust the forward contract value. We don't adjust the sale like we did right at the beginning of the chapter because we haven't recorded it yet. So the next step is settlement. So that's what we're going to do on page 11. Oh, and that's August 1st. So August 1st, Settlement of forward contract and record the sale. So, first thing, let's record the sale. 
Well, we get cash. And we credit sales. We're going to take 500,000 times 1.272. Looking back on page 10, because it's the sale, it uses the spot rate, so it's 1.272. Now notice they're equal to each other, and they always will be, so you don't really need to worry, but technically that is the spot rate. So I'm just going to put spot rate here, just to remind you. And that is 636,000. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write the forward contract to fair value. And we're going to put it in OCI first, then reclassify. So, looking back here, we've got to figure out what's happened. So, the US dollar went down again. So that means we've got a gain because we're giving and it's going to be the difference between these two numbers. So we're going to debit forward contract, credit gain on change, and that goes into OCI for 1.275 minus 1.272 times 500,000. So that's 1,500 for that. So let's just see where we are with the Ford contract. We've got two debits to it, 2500, 1500. So it's sitting there at 4000. And gain or loss on OCI, 2500, 1500 and 4000. And yes, they're going to match. So, now we're going to settle with the bank. So, we're going to be getting some cash. And looking back at the last page, we're getting Canadian US. So obviously all of this is being recorded in Canadian, but I just want to illustrate um, which direction going. And we also have to close um, the forward contract. So let's do that first. Credit the forward contract for 4000 to close it. Now, the amount of cash we're getting is 500000 times 1.28, which was the original contract price. So that works out to 640000 The U.S. cash is 500000 times 1.272 which is the spot or forward rate today. And that's 636,000. 
Now, obviously, they could settle net in cash. We could just have one debit to cash for 4000 Okay, so just make a little note there. But I wanted to illustrate what was actually happening. Now, the last thing we have to do is reclassify. Reclassify OCI gains and losses to net income. Now, we're doing two examples of sales. So, for sales, transfer to sales the sales account but for purchases transfer to inventory account so we're closing the gains and losses OCI we're gonna debit gains and losses OCI for 4000 and credit sales for 4000 So that means total sales will reflect the gain from the instrument. And that is the cash flow hedge. Okay, hopefully that made sense. See you next